Hey guys, I'm Will, and welcome back to day three of RA3D with first alumni of UW-Madison. Uh, as of tonight, we have finally finished up our design, so we can give you a good picture of our build choices, some of our major elements and structures, and a couple of the limitations of our design and possible fixes. First up, we're going to go over one of the main strengths of this robot, that being the intake right here. As you can see, it is a three-arm intake, all connected, and with two active arms chained together on one Neo being driven by a four-to-one reduction. Uh, this allows us to not only pick up game pieces from the floor, but also pick off algae from the reef and score into the processor, reef, uh, all levels of the reef, given some uh, wiggle with the arm mechanism and other dimensions and also potential for the barge, given a little bit more of a design change uh, with the height. Uh, main strengths of this mechanism are its simplicity. Uh, it only uses uh, fairly little material and is able to get a, a very, very good grip on most game pieces. Allows for a lot of control without a lot of weight and is great for putting at the end of the arm due to its relatively small frame given its functionality. Some of the drawbacks of this design are that it does at times intersect with the outside boundary of the frame perimeter and can cause some issues, one being rotated in different orientations. So just be aware of that when you are designing your intake. Hi everyone, I'm Kirsten here at the Milwaukee Robotics Academy. Uh, I did a lot of work with our programming for this robot in three days robot, and I'm here to share some of our experiences and re recommendations for things to improve. Uh, so we programmed our arm and wrist using just manual control due to time constraints with setting up uh, things like set points and PID. And we also have um, just a button to turn our intake on in each direction for algae and for coral. Uh, we actually use those same buttons for scoring the algae and coral because we just spin our intake in the reverse direction to intake one or the other. That same system works for scoring one or the other. Um, so for some recommendations for things to improve, uh, I would definitely say setting up set points and using PID control to uh, go to set positions for scoring would be very, very helpful, uh, especially with our long arm, it would be still very useful with a different design, such as an elevator. Uh, we had a lot of trouble lining up because our arm was kind of bouncing around and just hard to get that precision with manual control. So for everything L1, L2, L3, L4, um, even barge and processor scoring, definitely recommend having set points for those. Um, and then as well, we noticed a lot of difficulty with lining up side to side as well. Some of that would be a uh, swerve drive would help compared to tank. Uh, but also having vision yeah, using the April tags to line up would be a very uh, useful improvement. So here we have our arm. We used a CNC, a CNC router with a 1 8 inch drill bit for most of the holes and the um, clears, for the adaptive clears, for the motor mount and the hex shaft mount and then the wrist mount. This was beneficial for us to make sure that we were a little more accurate to speed up the assembly of the robot. We, this could also be done with just a traditional drill bit or a step bit, if that is easier, more convenient, or if you don't have a CNC router. For our gear ratios, we're, for the arm, this is a 42 inch arm that is about 15 pounds, approximate 10, 10 to 15 pounds. And our gear ratio on that running on this Neo right here is about, it's about a, uh, a, approximately 100 to one um, on the max planetary, and then about a three to one on the sprocket gear ratio. Then on the, then we have another our, for our wrist mechanism that goes down here with a chain. That's running at about a, about a 48 to 1 with the max planetary and then about a 3 to 2 on the sprocket. And then for our, for our gripping device, we're running that at a 3 to 1 with a Neo. It would probably be more beneficial to have two motors, one for maybe one for the LG and one for um, the other game piece, but we did not have the motors or just the time to get two motors attached on there. Hi, my name is Allison, and I'm part of the first alumni of UW-Madison. We're here at Milwaukee Robotics Academy working on day three of our Robot in Three Days project. Some of the improvements that we would really like to make include adjusting our arm mechanism. 
So our arm is currently a straight bar that only has one pivot right up here at the top and it connects straight down to where our intake attaches to the robot. This means that we sometimes violate the frame perimeter. So a really great solution or adjustment to this in the future would be using a linear rail instead of this rigid arm so that we could pull the intake back into the robot and extend it out when we need to score. This could also be achieved by replacing the arm entirely and using an elevator instead. Having a horizontal intake would allow us to pick up the algae more easily instead of having to have this top of our intake rotate all the way down over the algae in order to pick it up. I'll just put that back. Additionally, in order to help us stay inside that 18 inch boundary along our frame perimeter, we could shorten this intake. We've noticed that some other robot and 3 days teams have found success with having, instead of this really long intake that goes around and past the midpoint of the algae, having the wheels instead back here so that it's shorter and thus not as likely to reach outside of that 18 inch boundary. One other thing that we've noticed is that as we are intaking coral, over time, the coral becomes more slippery and the surface becomes harder for wheels to grip. So when you're making an intake, really make sure if you're using wheels, that your wheels are very grippy and that you're getting a good grip on the coral, especially as competition goes on. Finally, we also think that being able to pick up coral in multiple orientations will be really important for this game. The coral roll around really easily on the floor the coral roll around really easily on the field surface. And so if the, over the course of competition, they start getting stuck in the corners alongside the field boundary, it's gonna be really hard to pick them up if you need to be oriented face on to the hole on the end of the coral. If you're able to pick them up from the side, it's gonna be a really great competitive advantage for your team. Finally, we think that if, you want, if your team wants to go along the route of using an arm, having this really long shaft is not ideal. This long shaft allows for a lot of deformation and wiggle in the arm position. If you can shorten up the shaft so that maybe you have a triangle coming in here instead of having this really long shaft reaching between these two very distant bars, that would be really great and it provides more stability as well as reducing the amount of wiggle room that your arm has. But overall, we're really thrilled. It has been a great three days. We are so excited to have been able to do this this year and we're really looking forward to next year's game as well. We also want to give a huge shout out to Milwaukee Robotics Academy for allowing us to use their space, their amazing field, and also show off some of our progress to them. It's been fantastic to have their support in this project and we're really, really grateful for it. We'd also like to thank Fun Robotics Network for helping us broadcast our progress all throughout this amazing journey. And like, subscribe, check out their channels uh, for all sorts of information about other first competitions and Reefscape.